What's up guys, my name is Brandon and about a week after releasing beta 4, Apple returns today with iOS 13.4 developer beta 5. Now we also got beta updates for iPadOS, macOS, and tvOS, but once again, no watchOS 6.2 beta update just yet. Now last week it came a day after the release of the iOS beta, so if you do have an Apple Watch and you're on the watchOS beta program, you can expect that new beta probably tomorrow. But of course in this video, we're going to be talking about what's new in iOS 13.4 developer beta 5. We're going to talk about the bugs, the bug fixes, the performance, battery life, all the stuff that we normally discuss in these beta update videos here on the channel. Now we're also going to discuss when we might see the final version of iOS 13.4. But anyways, taking a look at the size of this update, you can see it's a very small update at 119 megabytes here on my iPhone 11 Pro. It was about the same throughout on all devices, including my iPad on iPad OS 13.4 beta 5. So that size continues to go down, which of course indicates that we are getting closer and closer to a final release. Now let's go ahead and check out the build number. So settings general about 13.4. You can see there the build number is 17E5255A. So once again, another A at the end of the build number there, which does of course indicate that we are getting closer and closer to a final build. And another indication of that is if we go down a little bit further to the modem firmware update, and it's once again 1.05.28. Now it hasn't changed since beta three, and that's also another indication that we are very, very close to a final release. Now, given that this is a fifth beta of a 0.4 release, and the fact that this was just a 120 megabyte update, I don't think anybody is really expecting a lot to be changed with this update, and you would be right. You know, it's just kind of the same with beta four. There's really not much that's changed on the outside. Pretty much everything that's gonna be changed now is just on the back end, like bug fixes, security enhancements, you know, fixes to Wi-Fi, LTE, things like that. So there's really not gonna be anything super interesting with this fifth beta. However, there is one thing I wanted to cover, and that is inside of the wallet application if you have an Apple Card and use Apple Pay to pay for your Apple services. So you can see now it actually shows you exactly what you spent that money on, whereas before it would just show an amount and it would not tell you exactly what you spent for example, in this one, $9.99, it shows you that that was spent on Daisy Disk, whereas before, it would not say that. It would just show the amount, and that's it. So this is not exclusive to iOS 13.4. It's rolled out to everybody now, but it is a nice little change here inside of the wallet application that just recently happened. Now, luckily, the settings hang has not returned in the fifth beta when we go to settings general about. When I first installed the update and I went to settings general about, it did hang for a couple seconds, and I thought that it came back. But once I go in there again and I close out the application and keep trying it, it does not happen again. So for some reason, that did happen in beta 3 and beta 4 fixed it. And it looks like it did not come back here in beta 5. So I just wanted to touch on that because I did at first think that it came back, but it did not. Now, another thing that has been fully fixed are the notifications. So notifications, the overlapping of notifications has been fully solved. Now, I've not seen anybody with these issues. Me personally, I've not had these issues at all in my notification center or lock screen. So if you were having overlapping of notifications and you haven't installed a new beta in a while, just know that it has been fixed fully. Now, I've had a few people ask me about car key lately and ask me if there's been anything new found with car key. And I can say no, nothing's been found in either the fourth or the fifth betas as far as car key. But I'm assuming we're going to know a lot more about this feature once the final version of 13.4 gets released. Now, this should be included in iOS 13.4. I believe this is a 13.4 feature. However, it could be pushed back to iOS 14. It kind of just depends on Apple and how far along it's coming. But with the outbreak going on, I just don't know what could be going on with anything at this point. Nothing is for sure because of the outbreak going on. So car key, I would expect to see at least something more on it when the final version of 13.4 gets released. But as far as anything new with it and the code or anything like that, nothing here in beta five and it was the same in beta four. Now, as far as bugs go, Seth left a comment on my beta four video saying this. He said, beta three definitely affected my connectivity horribly. Like every two minutes, I would lose signal completely even though I had full bars. But so far, so good on beta four. So that's not the first person I've seen mention that beta four fixed their connectivity issues. And it's really strange because it had the same modem firmware version as beta three. Beta three and beta four had the exact same modem firmware version, and it's the same version here as beta 5. It's the 1.05.28. So for some reason, there are some issues being fixed when it comes to connectivity, both LTE and Wi-Fi. And as you can see, a lot of people thumbs up that comment. So a lot of people are also having that same issue fixed. So 
Hopefully beta five continues to fix it for other people that were having that issue. And it should be as we are getting closer to a final release. Now, Nathan also left a comment saying notifications being delayed happens to me. It's usually only Twitter and the notifications come 30 minutes to two hours after when I should have gotten them. So if you guys remember in my beta four video, I put a comment up on the screen basically saying how notifications delayed. I was wondering like what that was because I never had that but people left comments telling me that it was basically exactly what it sounds like notifications being delayed. Like they're getting delayed when they should be coming in. So this person's having issues like 30 minutes to two hours after when he should be getting those notifications. Now I've not had that, but a lot of people apparently do have that. So let me know if that's been fixed for you in beta five. I would assume that it has. Uh, and it could be an issue also with the application itself. So not too sure about that one. I also got a DM from somebody here on Instagram telling me about an issue with Apple Music. He says on Apple Music, my lyrics won't load and I can't play a song unless it's already downloading and it frequently stops playing my songs out of nowhere. This has been going on for the last two updates, still not fixed. So that could be an issue if you have like a speaker, like a HomePod or something like that. Maybe you can't play on two devices at once. Maybe it auto plays, that happens to me sometimes. Uh, but I'm not sure why it's, you know, it doesn't play unless it's already downloading or downloaded. That's really strange unless you just have bad signal or something like that. But if you guys are having issues with Apple music or the lyrics or anything like that, let me know down in the comment below. Everything's been fine for me. And I use the music application and Apple music every single day, pretty much all throughout the day. So no issues on my end. And speaking of Instagram, I have had people ask me about the bug, the audio bug, if it still persists. And yes, the Instagram audio bug is still here. Unfortunately, if you play a video with audio and you go back to the home screen or you go into another application quickly, sometimes it will just continue playing the audio from that Instagram video, even if you muted it before you went out of the application. And it is super, super annoying. I've had this issue going on for a long time now, months now, and Apple has still not fixed it. We've had numerous updates to the Instagram app itself and those never fixed it. So that leads me to believe it's not an issue with Instagram. It's actually an issue with iOS because it does not happen to me on Android. I tried it on Android on the new S20 Ultra and it does not happen at all. And of course, I'm still having the issues with text message notifications. So basically when I lock my screen and I get a text message, I won't get any kind of indication that I just got a text message or iMessage. I will not get a screen light up. I will not get a notification. I will not get a vibration, a sound, anything. I have to tap my screen and then I see that I got a text message like 30 minutes ago. And then all of a sudden I'm late to respond because I never got notified that I got the notification in the first place. So super annoying. Apple is still not fixed this. This is another thing that's been going on for a while now. It does not have anything to do with the Apple Watch. My Apple Watch is not even on when this happens. So really not sure what's going on, but I'm not the only one facing that. And it's really, really annoying. I really hope Apple fixes it very, very soon. Now I cannot mention the word bugs without mentioning the word mail application. So the mail application has been easily the most buggy on iOS 13, but obviously with 13.4, they did do a lot of improvements. Apple improved the mail application a lot, fixed a lot of the bugs. And as these betas have gone on, really since beta three, I've not really seen any comments about the mail application. I shouldn't say any, but just not very many at all. And definitely not any that are like thumbs up by a lot of people. Not a lot of people are having these same issues with mail on these late 13.4 betas, which is a really, really good sign. And it looks like we are finally at the end of the life cycle of iOS 13, getting a fix for the mail application. Now, when it comes to the performance and battery life, performance and battery life is gonna be about the same as on beta four. I've not noticed any difference so far. Geekbench scores are a little bit lower here on beta five than they were on beta four. But of course you guys know that Geekbench scores don't usually translate over to real life. You're not really gonna notice a difference. If anything, it's probably even faster because it probably will patch up some bugs. Now, one thing I did also wanna talk about is battery health. So a lot of people are still under the impression that when you update, that impacts your maximum battery capacity. So some people think that it's like a bug or that you know updating causes your battery capacity to go down. And that is just not the case. So all it does is basically just recalibrates your device and gets a better reading every time you update of the actual battery percentage here, your maximum capacity percentage. So updating itself will never decrease your maximum capacity. It's just gonna rerun the test to determine the actual percentage of your battery health. So a lot of people still seem to be confused by that. So I just wanted to clear that up. But once again, performance is gonna be about the same as it was on beta four which is about the same as it was on beta three. Really nothing changed in terms of performance, just a lot of backend bug fixes and things like that that are gonna make it feel a little bit faster 
faster, but in terms of just raw performance and raw speed, you're not gonna see a big difference here in beta five at all. So now let's talk about the final release of iOS 13.4 and when we can expect that as well as a potential March event and iOS 14. So first of all, we are on the 10th right here. That's when we got the fifth beta. So theoretically, we could see the final build as early as next week. So we could see iOS 13.4, the final public release, released to everybody next week on the week of the 16th, possibly on the 17th or the 18th, maybe even the 19th on a Thursday. They have released final releases on Thursday before, but there's also a good chance that we wait until the following week. Maybe we get a beta six and then we get the final on the week of the 23rd. So previously we thought that we would see iOS 13.4 final released during the Apple March event, but it's looking like we're not gonna see an actual event in March from Apple, at least not one in person with you know people attending and things like that where they would announce 13.4. So my guess is that we could possibly be on the GM build right now. So we could possibly see the final as early as next week, but I think we are still gonna see it on the week of the 23rd. But of course, anything is possible at this point. It's Apple, nobody really knows. So that is the latest on as far as when we can expect iOS 13.4 final. And when it comes to iOS 14, we're still expecting that in June. We're still expecting the first beta in the first two weeks, within the first two weeks of June here. And WWDC 2020 is also likely to be canceled as far as the physical event where people attend. It could be held online. We may see a live streamed event from Apple, you know, introducing iOS 14 and all the features and things like that. But we could expect the first beta of iOS 14 within the first couple of weeks of June. I have made videos explaining when I think we'll see the iOS 14 beta. So if you want to check that out, I will leave links to my iOS 14 videos down in the description. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for iOS 13.4 beta 5. Not a ton going on. Really nothing changed at all. Just some, you know, server side fixes like in the wallet application and things like that. And just a lot more refinements to issues that people were facing in the past. And I really just wanted to talk about some of the bugs you guys were having in beta 4 as well, just to kind of bring light to those issues so Apple can see. And of course you guys should always be reporting these issues inside of the feedback application if you are having issues at all. So go ahead and install iOS 13.4 beta five if you were on beta four. And let me know how it's been running for you after a few hours. If you have any issues, if you run into any issues, if you notice anything different that I didn't mention in this video, leave a comment down below and you could be featured in my next video. Or of course you can reach out on social media as well. But that's pretty much it for me. If you guys did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course subscribe so you don't miss my iOS 13 final video when it gets released to the public. And hopefully we have more information about car key and OS recovery and all those awesome features coming as well. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.